Hi everyone, Adam here. Uh, welcome back to another video on the NMOS channel MOSFET. Uh, we're, today we're going to be going over the N channel MOSFET lab. And we will start with looking at some parameters that we're going to need to know. So we'll start with the VT value and the K value for our N channel MOSFET. So let's go and drag down an N channel MOSFET, which is right here. We'll drag that into our breadboard. Place that there for now. And we'll go straight into the adjust menu. And we'll find the KP value, which in our case is the K value. So we'll switch that to 2 milliamps. In my case, I'm going to switch it to 1 milliamp. And the VT value. In your case, you're going to switch it to 1.5. I switched it to 1.6 volts. So we'll start there. Uh, you have to calculate your load resistor. You have to calculate GM value, IDQ. Once you've done your pre-lab and you have all the values, you can come down here and we'll start with making figure number five, which is circuit number one. So all we need is a single resistor and a DC source. We'll flip that DC source. We'll place the source on ground and we'll connect the gate and the drain together. So now that all our connections are made, we can start by adjusting VDD so that VDS equals one volt. So if we just run it right now, we see that VDS is one volt. So if we calculate the drain current in this instance, drain current should be zero. So we're gonna repeat with different values. And as we're doing this, we should be filling out an Excel table with the different voltages and currents. In my table, I have the current through IDS, and I have a column for the square root of these values here. So let's keep adjusting. Point four. Still zero. Six. Still at zero. And now past 1.6 volts, I should see current flowing. Because I've set my VT value to 1.6. So here we can see we're at 56.7 microamps. Two volts. We have one hundred and sixty. We have two hundred and eighty two. 
So I just have to take a few more currents through the RD branch. So I have 415 milliamps when I am at 2.4 volts. Let's go to 2.6 volts. Five hundred and fifty five milliamps or microamps, sorry. Two point eight seven hundred and one. And last but not least, go to three volts. I'm around eight hundred and fifty microamps. All right, so after all those are inputted into my Excel sheet, I can go back here. And I can make a graph of VDS versus all my values uh, with root IDS. So the root of all these values in this column. And when I'm plotting them, I only need to plot the first zero value. I don't need all these zero values where it it wasn't in active mode because they're going to skew my uh, slope of my graph. So let's just put in one right where it hits the X intercept. And then let's put in all the rest. And then we find, at least in my case, that my slope is 0 0.02. So if I go into my calculator, I can do 0 0.02 and I can square that, I believe. Yeah, so the k value is equal to the slope squared multiplied by 2. So slope squared would be 0 0.2 squared equals 0 0.04, and then multiply that by 2. And then also multiply that by 10 to the 3, because the k value that we're using from way up here, too far, I think. Yeah, the K value we're using is in milliamps. So let's multiply by 10 to the three to get in the same units. So we see here that the K value that I calculate from the slope of my line is 0 0.8, where if I go back to my circuit, I set the K value to one milliamp per volt squared. So it's off by a factor of 20%, but that is still within the right ballpark. So after that is done, let's go ahead and we'll build the N-channel MOSFET audio amplifier. So let's go ahead and remove these connections. Don't have to remove that one. Keep that one there. Move that down and break that connection for now. All right, so we'll need three more resistors, one for R1, one for R2, and one for RS, oh, and also an RL. We need an RL. An RS. An R1. And an R2. I'm going to go ahead and move that a little bit. Just shift it around the breadboard so it can reach both of those. Just so it looks exactly like the drawing in your lab manual. Go ahead, move up that ground node. All right, so once this is done, we can go ahead and place two capacitors on the breadboard. Go ahead and flip those. All right, so the one goes on RD on the output and the one comes into the input, R1 and R2. So go ahead and connect those. 
Now that the capacitors are in there, let's go ahead and adjust the value to the specified value of 10 microfarads. So you can go into the adjust menu and swing it around to 10 microfarads from one. So we're gonna do that with both the capacitors. Then you should have calculated values for RD, RS, R1, and R2. I have just chosen random values for my experiment. Um, my gain is around the exact same gain that you guys are supposed to get in this lab. Um, however, I'm using a load resistance of 100K, uh, which makes my RD value around 10K. And um, yeah, so let's go from there. So let's start by finding the operating point. So first we'll run the transient analysis. And this will give us all the nodal voltages. So we see that my VDQ value for this particular circuit is 5.43 volts. Uh, it's close enough to the 7.5 volts. It means we won't be going into the saturation or cutoff region uh, um, very easily. Um, so we'll be staying in the active region, which is the triad region in uh, MOSFET. So let's go ahead and pause this simulation and connect the remaining nodes. So we're gonna add an AC sinusoidal source, put it there, we're gonna add a ground node to the back of that. And that should be all the connections you need. So now measure the output of, these, uh, of the load and also measure the input, so the gate voltage here. So we're gonna want to view that waveform and we're going to also want to view the output waveform. So let's go ahead. We can run the transient again. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to switch this to an input of, he says 200 millivolts peak to peak. So we're going to do 100 millivolts in amplitude. So we'll wait for a full size of the waveform to get on our screen. We're gonna adjust the scale using this thing over here. And once we have that, we can see that the peak to peak value of the green wave is right around one volt, which is as expected. And the peak to peak of purple wave is exactly 200 millivolts which is expected because there's no input resistance from this source. So that being said, let's go ahead and do step. Well, actually, before you go to step three, um, let's calculate the gain. So you're going to divide the output, which is the green wave by the input, which is the purple wave. So if you divide the peak to peak values of both those waves, you should find a value for your gain that is very close to negative five as you calculated in the pre-lab. So uh, now on number four, we're gonna slowly increase the amplitude of the input signal until you see some distortion. So this is where we're clipping. So we're going into the saturation region. So let's go ahead and increase the amplitude of our input. Doesn't look like anything happening quite yet. Oh yeah, okay. So right around 700 millivolts is on the input when the bottom starts to clip and So we're gonna sketch that distorted waveform. For this particular case, you're just gonna take a screenshot and save that to your lab. So you go ahead and do that. And once you've done that, we will head along to step five. So question number five, as you can see here, is a conceptual question. So it's asking why the peaks, so these are the peaks and the values of the output waveform um, don't clip at the exact same time. So why this, one is flat while the top is still not flat. And it has something to do with the operating point 
of this particular NMOS. Um, I'm not going to go much further than that. I'm just going to tell you that it has something to do with the DC value in relation of the VD in relation to how much um, v, your VCC value is. So you can go ahead and explain it from there in your lab. Um, once you're done that, let's go ahead and make sure we are saving the lab as 2507 lab five. Uh, this circuit is called 5.2, the NMOS amplifier. So we're gonna go ahead and save that just as we would have. The description is going to be your username just as it was in the last lab. So go ahead and save that circuit. And last but not least, it asks us to connect a 10 microfarad, or sorry, 10 millifarad capacitor in parallel with RS. So basically it wants us to bypass the RS here. So let's go ahead and add one more capacitor to our breadboard. Uh, there we go. We can go ahead and switch the value right away. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and connect that right to the source. And it just needs a ground node on the back end of it. So now that that circuit is fully connected, we can go ahead and run the transient again. And we're going to look at our output and our input waveforms again. Mind you, go back to uh, the 100 millivolts on the input so you can see a non-distorted waveform. So there should be an increase in gain. As we can see, my gain on the, sorry, my output waveform is now around four volts peak to peak where my input waveform is still the 200 millivolts peak to peak that I uh, originally put in. So you're gonna have to explain uh, any reasons for the discrepancies uh, in, sorry, increase in gain. And uh, I, I'm gonna give you a hint here. It's something to do with this bypass capacitor, obviously. And um, it, it's something to do with what you've seen last week when you uh, when you made a common emitter bypass, um, or sorry, it's something, uh, that you've seen earlier in the pre-lab when you talked about a common emitter bypass circuit um, and how that uh, possibly affects the gain. Because an NMOS and a BJT uh, practically have the exact same uh, small signal model. So uh, with that being said, it looks like we have completed the fifth lab, which is the NMOS amplifier lab. Make sure you're uh, clipping screenshots of all your waveforms for your lab report and make sure you're saving your circuits as private so the TAs can go back in and check on your work later on. Um, so we've calculated the slope of a I, uh, root ID versus uh, VDS graph and we've also created an uh, NMOS amplifier. So if you guys have any questions, um, have any suggestions, um, or, or uh, other things we could do, um, maybe a, a study tutorial before the exam or something like that. Let me know your opinions on it and uh, what you would like to see out of that. Um, just uh, shoot me an email. My name is Adam and uh, my email should be on CULAR. So without further ado, that's everything. Take care. Bye.